Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I've got a really fun brand new die set from Tim Holtz to show you. And this is called the Tim Holtz Sizzix Thinlets Vintage Sled. And look at this, this is just absolutely adorable. It's a set where we're going to piece it together to create this beautiful sled. So it's going to have lots of layers and lots of texture. And you can see that base is the sled, and these are the little pieces that the wooden pieces for the inserts on the sled. And then you've got the little top pieces. So all of this will create added dimension and interest. It also comes with this beautiful bow and some greenery and a little pine cone. And those little tiny dots there are for the little nails or screws on the sled. So I went ahead and die cut these pieces. And I just wanted to show you that I used the Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock to do that. Again, from Tim Holtz. And I die cut some extras of the greenery. I wasn't exactly sure how much I would need. And I'm not going to use those little nails or bolts. We're just going to use some dimensional enamel dots to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you could certainly do this in your traditional reds, but I wanted mine to look kind of like rusty, like a very old vintage sled. So I'm using Distress Oxide Ink in Rusty Hinge. I'm just using a foam applicator tool to apply that to all of these little areas that will be that rusty tone. Now for the wood pieces, I'm going to start with the antique linen. And again, I'm just using a foam applicator and apply that all over these pieces. And then these two little pieces here are for the sides of the sled, and that piece is for the top. And then to add a little bit more of a shadowing and to give it a more aged look, I'm going to gather twigs. I'll go around the edges at first, and then I'll pull that down over the top. And you can see that these pieces die cut with a wood grain texture to them, so it's going to, again, have a lot of depth to it. And so that darker color will pick up on some of those high spots. I'll do that for the rest of these pieces as well. And then I'll just do a little bit of blending. I'm going to use those same two colors again to do the little pine cones. So I figured I'd just leave those out. I'll do the solid portion of the pine cone in the gathered twigs. And then that overlay piece in the antique linen. And then I'll come back with the gathered twigs and just go around the edges just a little bit. I'll do the same thing for this second set. And then for that topper, the very top of the sled, I'm going to start off with the lost shadow. And I'll show you exactly how this gets layered up. And then we can use the black soot to add a little bit more interest to this. Now you could certainly use colored cardstock for all of these pieces. If you don't want to do the ink blending, just grab some colored cardstock and that will make it really quick and easy to do. Now I've got Twisted Citron and Rustic Wilderness. I'm going to start with that lighter color, add a little bit of the Rustic Wilderness over the top and just quickly blend that out. I'm going to use that Twisted Citron and Rustic Wilderness again, just to do these little holly leaves. And then I'm going to switch to the peeled paint to do some of these other little sprigs. And I'm just mixing up the colors of green just for a little bit more interest. And then that little holly set of leaves comes with some little berries. We're not going to be using those today, so I'm just going to set those aside. I've got my Tim Holtz embossing pen. So this has embossing ink in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to emboss the metal sections of the sled. And so I'm just going to apply that embossing ink only where I need that embossing powder to stick. 
So you do want to make sure this is completely dry before you do this. And then that embossing powder will only stick where you want it to be. And I've got the Distress Embossing Glaze from Tim Holtz. And I'm going to sprinkle that on. I'm just using my Nuvo dual tip spoon to sprinkle that on. And just, again, targeting those areas that will be the metal on the sled. And this color is also called Rusty Hinge. And that little piece off to the left, we're also going to emboss. So I'll tap off any excess. We can place that back into the container. And then we'll go ahead and heat set these. And I just absolutely love this sled. It just reminds me of when I was a kid. We, we went sledding almost every day after school. We had a little field and hillside near where we lived, and we just we were either sledding or skating most days in the winter time. And I, when I saw this die set, I just fell in love with it. I absolutely love it. So now we'll go ahead and glue on those wood slats. And I actually still have my old vintage radio flyer sled. I love it. I put it out on my front porch every holiday season with a big red bow on it. And again, this just reminds me of that. So let's go ahead and add these pieces and look at how this starts to come to life. It's just so dimensional. And a bit later on, we'll add a few more layers to the sled just to give it a little bit more stability. Now let's add this crossbar piece or the steering mechanism. And then we'll add these little strips to each side. For adhesive, I'm using the Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. And this is a super strong glue. And using the glue gives you a little bit of time to kind of slide these around and make sure you have them placed properly. Now that top piece, we're going to place that little wooden top piece. Now I did realize that this little crossbar, this little metal piece that goes on the middle of the sled, the top part, I I'm just referring to the packaging over there, and the top part of that should have been underneath. So I'm just going to lift this top piece up a little bit and slide that underneath. Just make sure it's nice and straight. Going back to the gathered twigs, I'm going to go around all the edges of this. Again, I want mine to have a really vintage look to it. And that'll take away that white edge and just give it a little bit more of an aged effect. And look at this, isn't this just adorable? Now here's where I've grabbed my enamel accents and I'm going to just use those as the little nails or screws on the sled. And these will dry uh, with a little bit of dimension to them. And I'm just following the packaging for where all these little nails need to be. And keep in mind that all of the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog. I went ahead and die cut two more of the sled out of that heavy stock and we're going to glue those together just to again give this a little bit more thickness. And I'll go back over those edges with that gathered twigs. Again just taking away any of that creamy white edge. So let's go ahead and quickly assemble these two little pine cones. And just gluing that top layer over the solid piece of the pine cone. And then I've got another piece of that heavy stock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And I've also got the Tim Holtz backdrops. This is the Christmas 2023 collection. This is a double sided paper and you get some beautiful papers in here. I was trying to decide which one I wanted. I wanted the sled to look like it was leaning up against a barn or the side of the house. And you could certainly use the brick. And there's also another one in here that looks like a white kind of distressed wood. But I decided to go with that one on the right. And 
I'll quickly flip through this so you can see some of these beautiful papers. We will be using the little candles, the little lanterns as well in a second. So let's set that aside. We can go ahead and cut this piece down again to four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'll just go ahead and attach that to this panel. Now let's take the ground espresso. This is a nice dark brown and we're going to go all the way around the edges. This will just bring everything together, kind of bringing your eye in towards the center. And I'm doing it a little bit darker on the four corners. And then again, I want to go around those edges just to take away that white edge. Now I cut two pieces of white 100 pound cardstock. And what I'm going to do is tear in two different directions, both away from me and towards me to give me that pretty ruffled edge. And I want one to be a little bit taller than the other. Now I've got the Snowy Sky stencil from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to do a little bit of a stenciling with this with some stencil paste. I love this little snowflake stencil. I, it's just perfect for this particular card. I'm going to grab a palette knife from Tim Holtz and I've got the Distress Texture Paste from Tim Holtz and this is called Opaque. So it's this beautiful, nice white paste and that will give us a really beautiful texture for the background. I'm going to place this on. I want a nice thick coating of it I want to make sure that I get a lot of texture on that snow. So I'm just going to apply this all over. And then we can go ahead and remove that stencil. And you do want to make sure you clean off your stencil and your palette knife really well when you're done. So just take that to the sink and rinse that off. Now I'll just use that knife to scrape away any excess and then we can let this sit and dry. I'll just take that to the sink and clean that off. Now, when I came back, this was nice and dry. So I've got my two snowy borders. I'm going to add a little bit of that Nouveau glue across the top, kind of on that ruffled portion of the snow. I'm spreading it out with my finger just to get a nice thin coating of glue. And then what we're going to do is add a little bit of glitter to this. So I've got the Distress Rock Candy Glitter and we'll sprinkle that right across the top and that will just give it a little bit more sparkle. Just tapping away any excess and then we can put that excess right back into the container. Once those were dry, I'm going to start off with the larger snowy border and place that down with some glue. And then for this second snowy border, we're going to pop this up, but I want to just check and see where that little sled is going to be. I want it off to the left hand side of the card a little bit, and I do want to make sure there's enough room to tuck that in. So I've doubled up some foam tape. So I've got the Scotch foam mounting tape. I doubled it to get some height on this. And then I'm going to just place it around three sides of this border. So we can go ahead and line that up right at the bottom of the card. And I did add a little bit of extra there just to fill in that open area. So we can go ahead and glue this down. Just tucking it into that little snow bank. And now let's grab some of that foliage that we have, some of that greenery, and let's start adding that in. Now I did not die cut the bow that comes with this, but you certainly could. We're going to add a bow um, using some of the, actually some of the mummy cloth from the Halloween collection, and it's going to give us a really vintage look. But again, you could certainly use that dye that comes with this set. 
And I'm just going to kind of tuck these in here and there. And you can see we have a nice variety of color. And for the holly leaves, I've just kind of, uh, just kind of bent them a little bit using my fingers. You could certainly use your sculpting tools to give those a little bit more interest. So you just kind of want to curl these up a little bit, just kind of fluff them up a little bit. And here's that mummy cloth that I was talking about. So it's kind of like a gauze. I'm going to use that to make the bow. So off camera, I made this bow. I looped it around about three times and just tied a simple bow with that. And I'm going to glue that right up at the top. That will take a little bit of time to dry. What I will do is come in with my reverse tweezers just to hold that down. But I wanted to get everything in place first. So I still have a little time to move things around if I need to here. So let's tuck in that pine cone. We'll save that other one for later. And here's where I've got the reverse tweezers. I'm going to clamp that in place. I've also got the bleed proof white ink. I'm going to add a little bit of that to my glass media mat. And then I'm going to add some water to that. And with a small paintbrush, I'm going to spatter this entire panel. I wanted that little sled to have some of the spatter on it as well. So I'm not going to mask anything off. I want to make sure I get a little bit of that snow everywhere. Let's go back to that paper pack that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to cut out, I'm going to fussy cut a few of these little lanterns from this paper. And then I'm going to add a bit of the diamond glaze. This is just a clear glaze over those little berries. I want to bring this paper to life a little bit. And then I'm also going to take my Wink of Stella clear glitter pen and just add it to the little rays of light coming off these lanterns. And again, that will bring these to life a bit. The next thing I'll do is grab a quote chip. These are the label quote chips from Tim Holtz Ideology. And I love these. Oh, I just think these are fantastic. You guys know I love the quote chips. And these are already three-dimensional because they're nice and thick. And I grabbed a bunch that I thought would be really cute for this project. But I am going to use the one that says, A little magic can take you a long way. So uh, I'm going back to the ground espresso. I'm going to go all the way around the edges just to darken those up. Because again, it is like a cardboard edge, so you want to take that away. And then I'm going to give a little bit of a vintage look to these little candles. So I'm just going to go right around the edges of these as well. Do you want to make sure that diamond glaze is dry before you do this? And now I've popped this one up. I put, I, again, I doubled up that foam tape and put it behind that smaller lantern. I'm doubling it up for this one as well. That smaller lantern is going to sit right on top of this sentiment quote chip. It'll look kind of like it's sitting on a little shelf. I'm adding a little bit more tape to this one. This one will go down at the bottom, kind of tucked in this little snow bank. We'll be adding some more greenery to this in a minute. Again, you want to bring these little die cuts or these little cutout pieces to life. So I find by doing, by doing a little extra to them, you can kind of give them a little bit more interest. And then this one is going to get attached to this quote chip. So let's glue that quote chip down first. I'm applying plenty of glue to that. I want it to look like a little plaque on the side of the barn. And then we're going to add a little glue to the bottom of this and then we can attach these two together. I decided to age that mummy cloth just a little bit more. I've got a little bit of the ground espresso ink. I did not ink up the applicator tool. I'm just using what's left on there. And I'm just brushing a little bit of that over top just to give it, again, that a little bit more of a vintage effect. Now I've got these leftover sprigs and holly leaves. So I'm going to start tucking those in here and there. 
got that little pine cone. I popped that up a little bit. You can cut these down if they're a little bit too long. I'll tuck a few in behind this lantern up at the top. And that'll just finish everything off. And if you really love the Tim Holtz dies and from the Christmas 2023 collection, you might want to check out a video that I recently did. It was the Tim Holtz reindeer sleigh. And in that one, we're going to also use the brand new forest shadows trees. And they're just beautiful. And we're going to color those using some mica stains. And we'll do some ink blending to create the moon and the sky. So I'll link that below and also on my blog if you're interested in taking a look at that. But for now, let's take a look at the finished card. And you can see all the texture and dimension we have. And it really wasn't that difficult to do. It was just really super fun and easy to do. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.